welcome to Impact Gospel Ministries. Welcome to our service this morning. It's Thanksgiving weekend. So happy Thanksgiving to everyone. We're here this morning to give God thanks. Every day is Thanksgiving for us. But because they, they have given us an extra day today, it's known as Thanksgiving Day, we have a chance to give extra thanks to Jesus. And he so deserved that this morning. Let us pray to begin our morning's worship. Father in heaven, we thank you this morning, oh God, for this day. We thank you for waking up, up waking us up this morning. We thank you for life and breath for another day. We thank you, Lord Jesus, oh God, for your goodness, for your greatness. We thank you, Lord Jesus, most of all, for your son, Jesus Christ, who you sent on the cross, oh God, to suffer and die for our sins this morning. God, we're so thankful, Lord Jesus, oh God, that, oh God, through him we can have life, oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, oh God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Lord Jesus, oh God, because, God, you're so faithful to us, Lord Jesus, oh God. Lord Jesus, oh God, as the songwriter says, if I had 10,000 tongues, Lord Jesus, it wouldn't be enough, Lord Jesus, oh God, to praise and to thank you this morning. So, Father God, we just praise your name this morning. Oh God, we just honor you, Lord Jesus, oh God. We just lift your name high, Lord Jesus, oh God. We just worship you and adore you, Lord Jesus, oh God for all your greatness and your goodness toward us. And Father God, for all the times, oh God, that we have forgotten to say thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh God, we say thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Lord. Oh God, we say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Oh God, bless us today as we come, oh God, we pray. Lord Jesus, oh God, help us to look to you in our eyes and hearts and our minds be focused on you, Lord Jesus, this morning. May we give you the honor and glory and praise, oh God, that, oh Father God, you deserve this morning. Bless us all here this morning. Bless those who are on their way. Bless those who are watching online, oh God. We pray, touch each heart, oh God, touch each soul this morning. God, we honor your name. Take over at your own sweet way. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We'll begin this morning. We'll um, read a passage of scripture. We will read from Psalm 100. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I'm going to read those verses. Praise the Lord. Let's stand for the reading of the Word of God. Amen. It says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And that's how we have entered this morning, with our thanksgiving. For the Lord is good. Amen. He's a good God. Praise the Lord. We're going to start our service by singing thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all you have done. Praise the Lord. Amen.
My soul is just is at rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus. Are you happy this morning? Amen. That you took your place, took our sins, took mine and your sins, and we bore them to Calvary. He made them his very own, and he suffered and died for you and I. I'm thankful this morning. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving me
the songwriter said, all my life you have been faithful. All my life you've been so good. With every breath that I am able, I want to sing of the goodness of God. That's my desire this morning. With every breath that he led at me, I want to sing praises to his name. I want to glorify his name. I want to magnify his name. Because if it wasn't for him this morning, I would not be here. Praise the Lord. 
thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have been faithful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He has been faithful. Amen? He has been faithful. Amen. He has been faithful. He's a faithful and compassionate God. And we thank you this morning, Lord, for your faithfulness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. At this time, um, we'll uh, have a prayer for the offering. Please continue to give at eigministries.com or e-transfer to give at eigministries.com. We also have a, a place for offering at the back table if you would like to um, put an offering there. And uh, we'll ask Brother David if he would pray for the morning's offering. Praise the Lord. Thank you.
can turn things around. And no matter how we have to go through the storm, he will be with us through the storms. Just like he showed up for the three Hebrew boy in the fire. He didn't send help. He showed up himself. He was the fourth man in the fire. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He will show up for you this morning. There's nothing that's too hard for him. There's no problem that's too big for him. He's bigger than all the situations that we face. Call upon his name. He's able this morning. Thank you, Jesus.
Jesus, I thank you for being so good. You know, the only person I believe uh, can, can really come up with those words would be someone who has proven God to be so good. I thank you, Lord, for being so good. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Don't uh, uh, bear with me a little bit. My, my, my gadgets acting up here. You know, we listen to the to the worship team as they they sang or uh, led us in those beautiful songs, and uh, we we found ourselves having entered into the presence of God to to worship and to bless His holy name. And some of the songs that they were talking about or we were singing about, all my life you have been faithful. All my life, you have been so good. Because we know God that you are, you are that faithful and that good. I just want to thank you. Jesus, I just want to praise you. I praise you for being so good. You died for me one day. Does that let us want to give him thanks on this Thanksgiving weekend? What a wonderful God we do serve. What a mighty God we do look to. He's the God of our salvation. In him we put our trust. In no other but Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. This morning, I want us to continue to give him thanks. And, and, and I wonder if you can turn your scriptures with me to Psalm 111. Oh God, you have been so good. Ah, oh, you have been so good. I want to look at a few verses here. Psalm 111, and I want to look at verses 1 to 4 to start. It reads like this. Praise the Lord. I will praise the Lord with my own heart. In the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, studied by all who have pleasure in them. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonderful works to be remembered. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. God, we give you praise this morning. God, we lift you up. God, we magnify you, God, because you have been so good. There's no God truly like Jehovah. God, you are the only one that do the things that you do, God. I pray this morning, Lord, as we continue to worship and to lift up your name in thanksgiving, God, that your words will go forth and they will bring encouragement, God, as we give you praise and honor for the goodness that you have done to us, the goodness that you have shown in this land, and your generosity, God, that you will spread your blessing over so many. God, we want to give you praise today. I just want to thank you for being so good. Praise the name of the Lord. Today, over the week as I was preparing and studying what the Lord wanted or laid on my heart that I wanted to share with you. This has been on my heart for the past couple of weeks. And this morning I'm speaking to you 
straight from my heart because all my notes are in closing here. But let the Lord, let, let the Lord have his way. We have been singing about the goodness of God. And I want to, I want to encourage you on the, on the topic of the awesomeness of God. Awesome God, awesome salvation. When, when we think of the word awesome, I picture us climbing a, a, a mountain or a high hill. Bless the name of the Lord. If any of you have been to Banff and been up that mountain, you know what I'm talking about. If just by going up in the, in the gondola, you might be tested. If you're scared of heights, like I am, only certain heights, you start to feel a little nervous as you're going up because there's a desire in us to get to the top of the mountain. There's a desire to be able to see what I could see from the top of the mountain. So getting up there was not an easy chore. But if you can remember, when, once you got to the top, once you got to the top, you, 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 you're lost for words. I want you to hold on to that feeling. That's what we mean by awesome. When we talk about that awesomeness of God is in the face of his goodness, we are lost for words. There have been times we have been, we have been surprised and shocked and, and our mouths hang open. I believe we are lost for words. You know, somebody uh, usually comes to say, no, close up your mouth, man. You even forgot that it's open. You're, you're in shock and awe. You're just blown away by what you've seen. When we talk about how awesome God is, that's the feeling we are experiencing when we, when we talk about his goodness. And I believe when the, when the author spent his word, his, his song that we were able to sing, when he talked about your soul so good. I love you because you for being so good to me. I believe he was he was thinking, God, I don't even deserve such goodness. God, you have done so much for me, I would be satisfied with all you have done before. But God, you have gone beyond and you have done even way more. You are so, so good to me. You died for me. Oh God, help us, Jesus. He set me free. Saved my soul. And made me own. I mean, God, you have been so good to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when the psalmist, in, in, in chapter 111, I believe he caught that feeling when he started to write about the goodness of God. Amen. He began by saying, praise the Lord. You know, in another translation, he said, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, dear, meaning praise to Jehovah. Amen. Praise, praise. When we break that down, it's like boasting in the Lord. You know, the psalmist went on in one, in, in one part of the psalm to say, my soul boasts in the Lord. Yeah. It means that when we, when we talk about the awesome goodness of God, our whole emotion gets into it. Yeah, that's right. Some people say, no, don't get all em emotional. When you're in the house of the Lord, don't get all emotional. They're going to chase me out of the church because when I get into the house of the Lord, I get all emotional. Right. I want to love the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, with everything that is in me. Yeah. That sounds like emotional to me. Yeah. You see, when, not, when we don't have emotion in here, we all uh, prim and proper, structure, keep everything in a certain way. But you know, like when David danced, before the Lord, he was all emotional. The scripture teaches us that he danced 
until his clothes was off. Even his wife looked at him and was ashamed of him. But David did not care. He got emotional in worshiping his God. Amen. Because God has been so good, so awesome to him. Praise ye the Lord, he said. I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. Oh God, help us, Jesus. This sounds like church to me. Amen. Amen. In the assembly of the upright. And I, I like this. He didn't just say, I will praise him among the, 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 godly, the, the godly or the believer. He said, in the assembly which would suggest a gathering. Yes. Amen? Yes. Which would suggest not just in name, but a physical gathering in the assembly of the congregation. Yes. Yes. I feel like I, I am getting in the same zone as David was when he wrote this psalm. Yes. How awesome you are, God. I will sing of your praises in your house, yes. in your assembly. Among your congregation. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He went on to talk about the works of the Lord. The works of the Lord are great. Studied by all who have pleasure in them. Not everybody has pleasure this morning in the works of the Lord. Some people deny that there's a, a work of God going on. Some people deny that there is a God. This morning I had a disturbing thought, and it might disturb some people. If it disturb you to good, praise the Lord. We think of the pandemic we're in. We have to talk about it because it's still going on. So that we are reminded to be careful. Some of us are so worried. Be very careful to practice as much as in our power to do. But then you look around us and you see some that refuse to do that. Not only that, they can't believe that there's a pandemic. Some say that the government is pulling wool over our eyes. You know, the government does it, did it, or is doing it for ulterior motives. Some say the number, you don't really have that many, so many, so many millions of people dying in the world from this. They, they are making up the numbers. This, this is happening in the very world that we live in. This is not in Bible times. This is here and now. But we have different sets of people. Some people can believe it. Others deny it. Others look it straight in the face and say it is something else. Doesn't that remind you of the, the gospel of Christ? We look around us. The scripture teaches us that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament show it this kind of word. If you want to believe that there is a God, you don't have to look far. Just look at, at the creation around you. Then you would not believe that lie that it came from chaos. There was an explosion and all this beauty came out. What explosion have you ever seen in your lifetime that brought such beauty? Usually, after a, a hurricane, a earthquake, or any, even uh, an eruption of a volcano, what you see in its way is devastation and ugliness. But when we look around at creation, the beauty, the, the intricate parts of creation that is formed, there must be a mighty power behind it. Glory to God. And this, this afternoon or this morning, I want to celebrate, I want to let the world know that I have found a secret. I know who have formed the heavens. I know who have created the earth. Brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, I know who, who has created me. Amen. 
Lord. And today we give thanks. God, you are awesome. God, you bring out in me all my emotion just to praise you. Who could do the things like you have done? Out of nothing, he created this world. I will take it a little bit further. I know we have in our historical books and even in museums, they, they talk about uh, uh, dinosaurs and those huge creatures that used to roam the earth. But I have a provocative thought for you. You see, when God created the heaven and the earth, he did not create it young. He created it mature. Amen. 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 When God created it, when, when he, when he commanded from the, from the sea for the waters to bring forth, they did not bring forth eggs and cells and little ones. It brought forth mature beings, mature creation that walked on this earth. You see, when God created the earth, they say it takes millions of years to farm diamonds. Well, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. When he created the earth, diamonds were already in it. Yes, the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, the Lord. Hallelujah. So this morning I can tell you that theory that these creatures walk the earth. Yes, you can find the fossil because the earth was created with them in there. Some, some scientists might say, yeah, you don't know what you're talking about, but in the name of Jesus, I know God created this earth. Yes, yes. And when he created it, he created trees, trees that was standing, already tall, ready to bear fruit. It took some years for that to happen. And you see, because God is so wise, even the very, the, the source of oil, and those things were already placed in the earth. There was minerals already in the earth for man. Of course you would see things in the earth that looks like it happened in this lifetime. But never. Millions of years. Oh. But when we look at the awesome power of God, you got to believe him from start to finish, brothers and sisters. You can't just believe that he's able to do certain things, but certain things is out of his power. God is able to do all things. Nothing is impossible for our God. And then we talk about the awesome God. The awesome God. And let me tell you something. You see the salvation that we have? The scripture teaches us that we all have sinned and come short. The glory of God. In Romans 10, we are taught that we only have to believe, confess with our mouth, and believe with our heart that Jesus Christ of glory was raised from the dead for you and I, and you shall have salvation. You just got to believe. He said, because you got to confess with your mouth. Amen. You got to tell it out. You can't just soak it in. I, Lord, I believe. Confess with your mouth. And let me tell you something. When you walk, when you walk into, uh, before the, the judge and they ask, you know, ask you a question. They ask you to, to, to give your evidence or your witness or your statement. You can't just sit there or stand there and just be silent. You, you can't give it in your mind. Your Honor, you already know. Your Honor, I have it written down here. They want you to stand there and be clear in your own words. Even, even the lawyer who have taken your statement or the, or the, or the cops that have taken your they still want to hear it from you. Because you see from your mouth, confession is made and God is no different. If you want to be redeemed, if you want to be relieved of your sin, if you want to be saved, if you want to receive this wonderful salvation, all you have to do is believe and confess it with your mouth. I believe that the confession part is such that the rest 
of the word can also hear you. Amen. So you see, we can't read hearts. Thank God for that. Mm -hmm. You can't see my heart, I can't see yours. You know, some will argue, what's the use I need from my and God can see? Let God look in. Because God can change things in me. Mm -hmm. if, if I look in yours, I have a lot of criticism, but I can't change one thing. <laughs> I will start looking down on you, judging you are whatever it is, but I can't do anything to help you. But when my God looks in, and when he sees what's in there, he can fix what's in there. He can change what's in there. He can purify my heart and make it clean before him. The awesome God can do that work in me because I am his creation. And yet still, the disobedience of man, God in his power would fashion salvation for you and I. Oh God. When I thought about it, I go, he took an awesome God. Are you with me? He took an awesome God to do something awesome. Doesn't it? Yeah. An awesome God. He took an awesome God to come up with this awesome salvation. Yes. Imagine to have the curse of sin pronounced on us when we didn't even have anything to do with it. Don't you, does, does it feel unfair to you? It's not like we could, we could say to Adam, man, things are going to be tough for us in 2020. So you don't go mess up anything. You know, we want everything to be all right. Make sure you obey God in all that he said. We had no saying it, didn't we? No. But because of him, the scripture teaches us, because of one man, the curse of sin was pronounced on the whole world. We are all set to reap the rewards of sin. But the mighty God, the awesome God, God, you are so good. You have been good to me. The awesome God, he looked at humanity and he goes, I got to help them. Yes. Praise the Lord. I want to help them. They have messed it up, but I want to redeem them. I will send my son to die for them, to be the one lamb, to shed his blood for them, that they can receive forgiveness of their sin, to open up a way to the throne of grace that they might be free. Awesome. And the only one I got to do is believe and confess. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Awesome salvation. Awesome salvation. There are many of us get up this morning breathing the same air. But not everyone with the same belief. Not everyone give, give God thanks. Not everyone prays and worship him. There are many that did other things because they don't know. They haven't yet received this awesome salvation. The good thing about it, the scripture teaches us that there is no difference between Greek or Jew. We can take it further. There's no difference between whether you are from Jamaica, whether you are from uh, Latin America, it doesn't matter where you're from. Salvation is offered freely for every single one of us. Amen. That whomsoever will. Whomsoever will. And you see, when God changes us, we can have a relationship with him that we are no longer trapped or become slave of sin. But now he's calling us uh, jo ears and joint ears. He even said in this word, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. Because servants don't know what their master is doing. But you, I have shown you everything. We are no longer just servants, but we are fellow laborers with Jesus Christ. And in the salvation way, he promised that he would walk with us. Amen. Come on, children of God. He's going to commune with us. Wherever you gather, touching anything in my name, I'm going to be the next one at that meeting. Amen. Hallelujah. 
I preach and the three, the three evil boys of the fire. Oh my goodness. If I promised myself I wasn't going too long because I believe she preached preach a sermon today. Amen. You know, if I had if I had asked her to go preach a sermon today, she would have told me, no, but I believe the Holy Spirit came yes. by her and she delivered a powerful, a very powerful message. Yes. And I hope every single soul that hears this take heed to it. Amen. Because let me give you a secret. She's not usually like this. She would tell, no, 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 no. But look at her this morning. The anointing of the Holy Spirit from the awesome God. He delivered a message, and I believe there are ears out there that needed to hear that. So when we look at that, we look at the awesome God provide such an awesome salvation, such a you and I can be in an awesome relationship with him. So even in the in the dark of night, no matter how lonely it feels, you can go, Lord Jesus, Father, my Father, my God, Jehovah. You know, somebody said, my daddy. You can call to him in whatever language you want. In whatever, no matter how simple it is. So long as the heart is sincere in him. He said, I will hear from heaven. He will hear and he will answer. That's awesome. Amen. That's awesome. Amen. We struggle to describe how good it is. In closing, it's no wonder many times people asking you to explain this and you, you go to certain parts and you go, you, you, you have to experience it. I, I, I can't tell you everything. He said, man, God is so good. He did this for me. He did this for me. And then you get to the point where you run out of words because they are looking at you still trying to get it. Even God is good, man. He picked me up. He turned me around. What do you mean you pick you up? Pick you up from where? You know, oh, you know, I was down, down where. You try to explain it, but they're looking at you. They cannot grasp it. Because you see, you are the one who experienced it. All you can say to them, come taste and see. If you don't believe me, man, you taste and see. God is good. Blessed is the man that put their trust in him. Today, we celebrate Thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. What a mighty, awesome God you are. You have been good, good to us. God, you have fed us. You have clothed us. Lord, we, we, we woke up from our sleep. We don't know. What was, was happening while we were sleeping? For oh God, you kept our organs working. Oh my goodness. You know, we, 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 we didn't they tell you how the brain have to do all of this. But I tell you something, when we are sleeping, we are not thinking, man, I got brain, you got to tell heart to stay, stay pumpkin. I'm saying pumpkin. <laughs> Or stay pumping. You know, lungs keep on working. You know, we go to sleep, we snuggle down nicely, and by the power of the awesome God, we wake up the next morning, we stretch and we go, God, you're good. good. Yes, Hallelujah. Good. We get up and we look outside and we see the beauty of the, of, of the morning sun, and we go, God, you are good. Everything functioning. Why would we not give him that? Why would we not give him praise? Oh God. May the Lord bless you this Thanksgiving weekend. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. As we show our gratitude to him. Everybody is giving that for all kinds of things. But believers, believers take it to another level. We might not have churches. 
but we are praised for God. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what we have on the table, but to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter if all the family is able to gather around the dinner table today. We are still saying, to God be the glory for great things you have done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pandemic might still be raging, but we are saying, to God be the glory. You see, just, just like Habakkuk, Habakkuk talked about, you know, though the, the flocks were not giving young, the, 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 the feed is not no longer on the vine. He's talking about hard times. But he said, as for me, I will still call upon the name of the Lord. I will still trust in God. I will still lift up my, my heart to God and hold on to him because he's so good. So brothers and sisters, spread the cheer. Make sure that the biggest guest at your dinner table this weekend is Jesus. Make sure that the biggest bird, well, I don't know what you prepare for supper, but make sure the biggest one is our thanksgiving up to Almighty God. He deserves way more than we have given to him. God, if we could, if we could take everything out of our house, everything that we got, and give it to you, Lord, it still would not be enough to give you praise. But we have to. Oh, Father, we give you thanks. Lord, we lift you up, oh God, we magnify your name. God, you're such a good God. Father, you're awesome in all your ways, Lord. Oh God, when we look around us, it took a God such as you to do the things that we can see, Lord. The things that, oh God, we experience and we enjoy. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For keeping our families, oh God, through many dangerous situations. Oh God, too many tough times. God, at times it seemed like we were not going to make it. But God, you brought us through, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, we have been through times where it seems it was hopeless. God, mercy seemed to be God. Oh, God, you came through. Thank you, Lord. God, even in the midst of this pandemic, oh, God, we look at so much grief, so much sorrow, Lord. So many have passed away. But, oh, God, we are still able to say thank you, Lord. Oh God, thank you, Lord. And Father, we thank you so much for this salvation, God. Oh God, it would be such sad, such sadness, God, to be in this Thanksgiving weekend and not know who you are, God. But thank you, Lord, you have granted us your freedom and liberty in you. And God, we have come to know you so we can give all our thanks and all our praise, Lord, to you. We can make our boast in you, Almighty God, because you are so good. So this Thanksgiving, Lord, receive our worship of Thanksgiving, our heart of Thanksgiving, Lord Jesus. Because God, we find no fault in you. There is nothing we can say, God, that is, oh God, that is opposite, oh God, to your goodness. God, we cannot oppose all the good things said about you, Lord. Words just fade. But this day, God, we are from everlasting to everlasting. And so, God, we will serve you, we will trust you, we will be grateful to you, Lord, because of this awesome deliverance that you're giving us. Father, bless other families. Oh, God, that might be listening to our broadcast today. Father, bless other families of this city. God, there are many, oh, God, who are wondering, oh, Father, where they would find their meal, God. Provide, make a way this afternoon, Lord. May it be a special thanksgiving for them where they can see the delivering hand, oh God, of the God of providence, Lord. Let none go hungry, Almighty God. Oh God, this, 
of that Thanksgiving week and many are lonely because families are not around them. Oh God, provide comfort. Many in the hospitals, oh God, not being able to be visited, oh God, by family and friends. God, they might be lonely at this time. God, bring a comforting, a comforting spirit to them, Lord. In the name of Jesus. And Father, all the glory and honor both to your name this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.